India Art Fair. The biggest art fair in the South Asian calendar transforms Delhi into the capital of Indian art each winter. 2018 also marks the completion of 10 years of the Art Mela. From when it began in 2008, then known as the India Art Summit. The art fair always makes Delhi buzz. The crowds jostling for a look at what is trending. It is an affair that highlights the huge influence the mass market event has had in creating an art season. The India Art Fair may have gotten over last week, but the essence lingers on. From master strokes of masters to installations from budding artists. This year's fair had something for every art connoisseur, exhibitor and art lover. For those who never had the chance to take a deco, to those who did steal a glance, here is a relook at all that was eye-catching at the fair. To make sense of the art on display, we have India Today's group photo editor, Bandeep Singh, and group creative director, Nilanjan Das, giving us the royal tour. Bandeep and Nilanjan did the rounds to explain all that is fair in love of art. Their first stop was artist Sachin Bondi's creation, Sounds Good. Bandeep, this is quite an interesting work. And, and I think the year and the balance and the map inside those balancing things, it, it gives a feel of, a, of power balance of the world. Like yeah. the justice, people are kind of pleading, justice is kind of not hearing. There is a lot of political statements happening in this art. Yeah, I, I strongly feel that, you know, I get a feeling that, you know, now everything is heard after careful weighing. Yeah, absolutely. Weighing of the, you know, uh, merit of the, of the plea, you know. There is this, the scales are there and the scales are uneven scales, tilted in different directions, in different, this thing, this is symbolic to me of the power that be and how it weighs you. And weighs it, it and it also ignores you ignores if you are not you, in yeah. that. This appears to be like Trump's here, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which nation is more heavy? And which more important? Yeah, yeah, and more where important. I can can kind of get a lot of advantage yeah. from that? It looks like the years of powerful countries. Yeah, absolutely. Know, and like how they weigh the world. Uh, Bandeep, I think this is an interesting uh, art. I think this gallery is from Calcutta. And uh, this is a work by Debanjan Roy. Ah, quite fascinating. And uh, it's quite interesting. Gandhi is taking selfie. Gandhi and is taking selfie leaning against a cow. So this is a Gandhi a that cow. is a Gaurakshak. Gaurakshak. And, and also he is very happy and proud. And the cow is golden in these days, you know, because Absolutely. it's valued. And it's valued in very many political terms as well. And religiously, gold is also very auspicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be, can, it, 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 it's kind of a part of the prayer, it's an idol, it's a god. And Gandhiji has a tablet, you which, know, is technology. Uh, which is technology. Brilliant work. Or canvas again. So we are at this very interesting space. Uh, it's a you know stall managed by the Richard Co Gallery from Singapore, and here we have this uh, you know very deity like uh, uh, image or installation. It, it gives me a kind of a feeling of a anthropological art. You know something uh, objects from our material culture are taken our everyday lives. You know you have tea strainers, you have sieves, you have. You know, hair clips, you have, uh, you know, cheap jewelry, can, tin cans, key rings, and, you know, they are, they are placed in, you know, in a very interesting artistic arrangement that it alludes to something else. You know, yes. it's almost like a middle class deity. Yeah. You know, let's talk to the, you know, gallery representative and uh, let us find out a little more about this work. Jessica, could you tell us a little more about the artist and the work? Yeah, sure. Um 
Well, this is a wall sculpture and two standing sculptures by Anne Summer. She's a Malaysian artist. She's trained predominantly in textile. So what you see is her sculptures carry this weaving technique that we use. It's called shuttle songket weaving. And the motifs are of Kwa Kumbu. It's a Malaysian tribal motif. And what she does is she combines that, something very traditional, with everyday objects from our everyday lives. I'm reminded of an Indian poet's lines when I see this. You know, it's li objects from our everyday life, you know. And this is a line from a poet called Dushant Kumar, who says, Main jise ortha bichhata hu, wo ghazal aapko sunata hu. You know, that the, what I am telling you the poem, of things that I almost cover myself with every night. Also the powerful thing about this thing, it's it's big, it's it's like huge and also it's kind of so much colourful. It gives it attracts you actually. It's almost like a you know a Kathakali Thayam Thayam yes, uh, dancer, you know? Uh, standing in the midst with all resplendent aura you know created by everyday objects. It's a celebration of everyday life. Absolutely. Ilanjana, I'm fascinated with this particular work. You know, they have taken currency and used the word dharm on it. Paisa hi dharm hai. And you know who has done it? A Venezuelan artist. And on, uh, I believe, on Myanmar, on uh, Burmese currency, yeah. you know? And with an Indian uh, typography. Yeah. It's a brilliant, brilliant way of merging economy. I just love the symbolism in this. Paisa hi dharm hai. And, uh, you know, with the budget that has just passed, yeah, I think this is this could be our this budget. This could be our, our you know budget message. Ki ab dharam ye kehta hai ki paisa dikhao. Or paise se dharam chalta hai. Paise se dharam chalta hai. Now we are taking you to one of the most political works, most provocative works that we have seen in the art fair uh, this time. And uh, this uh, is a painting of, uh, uh, you know, a chair, the arms of which are symbolic of the parliament. And there is an ape-like figure sitting uh, on top of it. And, uh, you know, it's very evident what it means. And, but, but we'd still like the artist Rajesh Srivastav, who's from Bihar and he's made a very political statement. And uh, we'd like him to explain the art to you. हम लोग जब कभी भी राष्ट्रपति भवन और या फिर पार्लियामेंट जाते हैं तो देखता हूं कि एक आदमी लंगूर ले अपने बांध लेकर के और छोटे-छोटे बंदरों को भगा रहा है तो वो कांसेप्ट था फिर मैंने सोचा कि मैं इस पे काम करूं तो और दूसरी बात है कि अभी जो पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो है हमारा मतलब कुछ भी हो मतलब एक 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 सांप्रदायिक तरीके के सी जो, जो बात कभी-कभी अखबारों में और न्यूज़ और टेप माध्यम से पता चलता है so, मुझे एज एन आर्टिस्ट लगता है कि नहीं ये सही नहीं है इसमें पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो में लंगूर कौन है और कौन ये बंदर है जो भाग रहा है इधर उधर जग जाहिर है क्योंकि हम देखिए हम आर्टिस्ट हैं और हम किसी खास तबके से और किसी खास कम्युनिटी से बिलोंग नहीं करते हमारा यूनिवर्सल एक अप्रोच होता है लाइफ में और अपने काम में भी तो सीधी सी बात है कि अभी जो भी मैं कंटेंपरेरी देख रहा हूं राजनीतिक जो उथल-पुथल शोरगुल इसको मार दो उसको काट दो कुछ भी हो एक स्टंट का आप क्रिएट कर दो और इसमें ये दो पैचेज है ना ये हमारे हिंदू जो उसको डिपिक्ट करता है और ये ग्रीन एक पैचेज है ठीक है और बीच में हमारा ये है तो इसको लेकर के मैंने कहा और अगर निलंजन इफ यू सीट केयरफुली the arches of the parliament are shaped like human, human beings, beings. Uh, almost okay. like waters, you know, Good, almost water. like milk the, milk the milk population milk. of the country, milk milk milk. a silent majority that milk. brings milk. this. Nilu, this is something that I want you to have a look. You know, these are the works by the artist Mohan Anand, you know, who can be called you know, the father of illustration in India. Absolutely. And this is your subject. So, you know, I'm giving you a treat over here. Exactly. These images, these illustrations, 
could well be from any of our essays and our columns in India Today magazine. And you'll be surprised. It's, it's 1950s, 50s, 60s. And they're work. relevant even they're relevant now. now. And, and the subject, the style, uh. we are all struggling with the modern style. And if you see his work, it's kind of absolutely amazing. He explains everything. And there is so much technique, you know, and such fine draftsmanship, you know, the, the drawing and the lining. It's, it's so rare. And it's, it's, it's done in reverse. Absolutely. And, it, it, and the reverse is, the, the difficult part is to visualize reverse. Look at this, you know, the, the, the menace of science, you know, the arrogance of the atomic science. And holding, the culture and the prakriti, religion. Holding prakriti. prakriti, nature, you know, and making nature dance to its tune. And this is, look at this, an image of Saraswati, you know, with her veena and the... Absolutely. And, 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 and if you and see the, the guy behind, he's and the lotus. holding a... Cross. And it's the cross is going into India. India's chest. Then if you see the, 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 the idea, it's a layered idea. If you see loads of interesting informations all around his work. If you go through his work, it's like going page after page. It's a story in itself. Bandi, the circle of life. We started with this gallery and we're ending with this fabulous art. And the teardrop with a tap on tap it. On, <laughs> such a lovely, interesting way of representing emotions. Yeah. It also shows key that when you have too much tears, also it's like a tap, another way around as well. Like I can control my emotions wherever I need those. The tears of our discontent. Absolutely. Yeah. And you this done by Subodh uh, Kerkar. Yeah. Brilliant work. Up to nalko mein bhi utna pani nahi hai jitna hamare aansu mein. Wow. <laughs> I'm joined in now by Mr. Swapan Seth, who is amongst the largest art collectors in this particular country. And the fact that Swapan, you are you have specially curated this walk for us, and you're going to be talking about the artists who've actually gone ahead and who sailed your boat. So we just take us through this particular exciting and exhilarating, you know, art walk that we're looking forward to here on India today. So here we are at Experimenter, and it's. Uh it's serendipity that, that Experimenter is the first gallery that you see because for me it's the first port of call in, in any art show. I've been an avid fan of theirs and I think they, they showcase some really cutting edge work and always look for the outlier artist. And that's uh, Pratik who, who co-runs uh, Experimenter and I'd love him to tell us more about Aisha Sultana and I'm so glad to have laid my hands on her finally and thank you for that. Welcome. Um, so I'm glad you got her hands on it because uh, she's someone who's stuff to get her hands on these days. So Ash Sultana is uh, based in Dhaka in Bangladesh and is one of South Asia's leading abstractionist contemporary artist. And uh, here we're showing two bodies of work, actually showing three ones on the other side, um, where she talks about how her engagement with form and architecture um, in, in forms her practice. So this, the body of work here behind me, uh, is called Form Studies. Swapan actually has got a beautiful set of Form Studies from us. Um, and uh, it kind of talks about architecture and the space and the relationship with space in the city. Uh, we're at uh, Ananth Art now. Uh, once again, a gallery that, that has been around for the longest and then, you know, Mamta Singhania who runs it took a sabbatical and now she's back. And, and I love this work by Birendra Yadav. I think if you close up onto the images, you, you'll see very, very fine technique. I like the simplicity of the piece of work, and it's, it's poetic in my estimation. But now we're getting into a booth, which I think uh, is a fantastic idea, which is Pavna Kakkar's brainchild, and where she's got hold of art by artists who are normally unaffordable. So you're going to see some work by Shilpa Gupta, you're going to be seeing works by Dayanita, these works cost about 6,000 bucks, and I think it's a steal and it's wonderful for kids. So I really think youngsters need to come here and see the work. So who saw Shilpa Gupta? 
and I, I love the way this book looks. And this is a tongue-in-cheek thing which just says curated, so you put it on your desk. And this is the Anita's work. So you get a box, and in the box are a bunch of these books which contain all of this work. And I think it's a great collectible, it's a great gift to give someone. And it's a fantastic initiative by Bhavna. And the 6,000 bucks is actually a steal, like you mentioned. It's completely a steal. I mean, this is unreal and it's fabulous. We're at uh, DAG Modern and we have the good fortune of having who I think is unarguably the, the finest repository of, of art knowledge in this country, Kishore Singh. And Kishore is going to be walking us through some of the wonderful work that is on display. And like I told you, this is, this is history in a booth. I swear to you, there it is. Uh, how many of us actually align art with nationalism? The very fact that Gandhiji, Rabindranath Tagore pushed it, the fact that Nandlal Bose has painted the first two copies of the Constitution of India. Nobody in this country knows about these things. I know about that. It's incredible that we are so ignorant about our artists. And that, that was actually the genesis for, uh, uh, for the idea for the entire exhibit, that we need to take pride in who we believe are our national treasure artists. The government notifies them, but what does it actually mean? And what binds this group together? and how do they differ. So I think that's what we've tried to represent here. So tell us about this work of Amrita. It's absolutely out of the box. Okay, so when you're trying to put together an exhibit, I think the interesting thing is that you want to bring in something that is familiar and, and something you, that is vastly different, etc. so that you kind of provoke interesting uh, conversations around it. So this particular work, uh, Amrita Shergil, we've known, uh, has been doing those fabulous works when she came back from Paris, went to Ajanta Elora, studied them, studied the miniatures, etc., and created an Indian style of modernism that she kind of worked towards and worked uh, in a manner that she wrote about very often to Kal Kandalawala, etc., other art critics. She's done no sculptures ever other than this one large work and a tiny uh, study uh, uh, otherwise. It's plaster of Paris made one year before she died and don't forget she died when she was 28 years old so this was probably the start of a new experiment somewhere and we don't know where it would have gone yeah. what might have happened Brilliant. okay on to a rare a rare sighting I'd call it Rorik Nicholas Rorik absolutely again um, why would you have a foreigner as one of your nine national treasure artists uh, it's interesting the last 19 years of Rorik's life was spent uh, in India. He came in from Russia, went into the United States, lived in parts of Europe before coming into India, uh, drawn by its philosophy. And he was a figure like Rabindranath Tagore in Russia and in Western, uh, in the Western world. So he writes, uh, he studies religion, spirituality, etc. Uh, he comes in. And like many Indians and the nine national treasure artists who actually represent a going back in time, finding your roots and going back to Gandhi's idea of the village and life in the village and therefore moving away from stately portraits and uh, you know landscapes and painting for the elite, goes and lives in a tiny uh, town called Nagar in Himachal, which is where he creates his art and look at that body of work which comes in out of the Himalayas, etc. And he paints the Himalayas endlessly. As a contrast, we have a work that he would do of the kind that was coming in out of Russia. And in Russia, he would paint stage backdrops with epics, the opera, etc. So you can see the manifestation of some kind of a story coming in as a part of what he was doing in Russia at that point in time. Thank you so much, Kishore. We'll see you around. Thank, Thank you so much. So that's a quick... Uh, wrap so uh, we've seen some some lovely work in terms of contemporary art and we've seen the the masters of India and I think uh, that is so wonderful about the India Art Fair and and my only wish is that more and more youngsters came here because it's not about understanding art I don't understand art at all it's about appreciating a thing of beauty appreciating an idea appreciating a scale and, and that is so important for our children to to imbibe
India Art Fair, an exhilarating celebration of art which is this year also taking you through and it is a leading platform to discover the modern and contemporary art of South Asia and it is also in many ways taking you through to the rich cultural landscape of the region. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.